Hey everybody, welcome. I'm Janak Goel and in this presentation I will talk about sonographic pathology of knee. Knee joint effusion is one of the most common pathology which I've seen in my practice. Knee joint effusion is seen as a hypoechoic widening of the supraocutalar recess. Here is this patient with right knee swelling and here is the sonographic image showing a hypoechoic widening of the supraocular recess. Here is the patella, quadriceps tendon, supraocular fat pad, prefemoral fat pad, and here is your femur, and here is the widening of the supraocular recess between these two fat pads. The supraocular plica is an embryonic remnant which completely or incompletely divides the suprapatellar pouch. Here is the hypoechoic suprapatellar plica. Here is on the short axis scan and here it is on the long axis scan. Lipoma arborescens is a rare condition which affects the synovium with villous lipomatous deposits, especially in the suprapatellar pouch of the knee. Here is the suprapatellar pouch and here is the villous deposits in the synovium on the long axis scan and here is your short axis scan. Here is this patient with hypoechoic non-compressible thickening of the synovial membrane indicative of knee synovitis and synovial proliferation. Compression with a probe helps differentiate synovial effusion from synovial proliferation. Synovial effusions are compressible with the probe. Here is a word of caution about compressibility. Large effusions may not be completely compressible with the probe because of their large volume. Here is another word of caution. You may have a patient which have a combination of both synovial proliferation and synovial effusion and it may be partly compressible just like that in this patient you see a part of this supraoptalar recess is compressible and in part it is not and you see in the part this supraoptalar recess is filled with synovial proliferation and also with synovial effusion. Here is a patient status post trauma and status post fall with the tear in vastus lateralis muscle. Here you see the discontinuity of the muscle fibers and a hypoechoic gap in the muscle fibers, so called bell and clapper sign, indicative of muscle tear. Here is a hyperechoic layer on the surface of the cartilage from uric acid deposits in a patient with gout resulting in a double contour sign. Here are some sonographic images from multiple patients with chondrocalcinosis showing multiple forms of deposits with the cartilage in patients with chondrocalcinosis. You see many different forms of deposits in the chondral cartilage. Here is this patient with osteoarthritis knee which shows hyperechoic projections from the femoral and tibial condyles and also has irregularity of the condylar surface and marked loss of chondral cartilage. Here is a patient with enlargement of pre bursa and the heterogeneous deposits because of hemorrhage in the bursa. Here is a sonographic image of a patient with deep infraptalar bursitis. Here is a patellar tendon, here is a tibial tuberosity and here is the enlargement of the deep infraptalar bursa on the long axis scan and here is the enlargement on the short axis scan. 
Here is a patient with a jumper's knee. Jumper's knee is a hypoechoic thickening of the patellar tendon at the attachment to the apex of the patella. Here is a long axis scan of the patellar tendon and a hypoechoic thickening at the attachment to the apex of patella. And here is your short axis scan the patellar tendon and here in the center of the patellar tendon you see the hypoechoic thickening of the patellar tendon. Here is a patient with a pain on the lateral aspect of the knee and on a sonographic examination is noted to have a hypoechoic lesion deep to the iliotibial band consistent with bursitis deep to the iliotibial band. Here is another patient with a pain and swelling on the lateral aspect of the knee. The sonographic examination showed a hypoechoic lesion superficial to the lateral meniscus and deep to iliotibial band. And there was an also an indication of a tear in the lateral meniscus indicative of a meniscal cyst. The meniscal cyst is a multi-loculated collection of mucinous material which is seen as hypoechoic structure adjacent to a meniscus and more common over the lateral meniscus and the aspiration of this lesion exactly produced a very thick mucinous material confirming the diagnosis of a meniscal cyst. Here is a patient with anterior bursitis. This is one of my patients with SLE came to see me with an acute onset of pain, was treated with 500 mg of naproxen twice a day and did not respond. Patient returned back in a week crying and help, asking for help. So a sonographic examination showed a heterogeneous widening of the anterior bursa with a power Doppler signal and responded very well to a local glucocorticoid injection. Here is one of my patients came complaining of pain and swelling on the posterior aspect of the knee. The sonographic examination of the knee on the posterior medial aspect showed a marked enlargement of the semimembranosus gastrocnemius bursa consistent with Baker cyst. There is another patient who came complaining of black and blue lesions of the knee and also has heard a sort of pop in the back of his cough. On sonographic examination, he is noted to have a ruptured Baker cyst which was still leaking into the cough and still had a residual effusion in the cyst and he was treated with decompression of the remaining cyst to prevent further leakage of the fluid into the calf.